we'll start with chapter 3 and chapter 3 is basically about the, the initial phase is about the pure substances uh, understanding what a pure substance is and uh, uh, how do you define a pure substance or a pure mixture and this would be followed by the phase change processes uh, and the focus of this chapter is on the property tables so essentially what we'll be doing is we'll be looking into the property tables and i would recommend that uh, for this chapter you should have your tables with you it's better if you have them in the hard form so uh, once we move on towards the later half of the chapter you'll have an understanding of uh, how to read the tables and it would be conven convenient for you while we're doing while we'll be doing the examples uh, to to extract the data out of the table so let's just, let us begin with the overview of this uh, chapter we'll start with the concept of uh, pure substance uh, we'll try to define what a pure substance is and uh, based on our definition of pure substance we'll move on towards the phase change process of a pure substance not all the phase change processes but uh, uh, a particular phase change process will we will we'll come to know why that phase change process is important for us from the point of view of uh, mechanical thermodynamics. Then we'll try to replicate that process on pressure volume and temperature volume, pressure specific volume and temperature specific volume diagrams. By the way, uh, uh, do you do you know why we have chosen these two uh, pro characteristic properties, pressure specific volume and temperature specific volume for the uh, process diagrams sir so because the system is a simple company it means they are independent and intensive properties uh yes we have chosen two independent intensive properties to identify the state of the system so on everywhere on the pv p specific volume and temperature specific volume diagram you have basically the representation of states of a system and that area basically would be representing the uh, any change in, in the state of the system could be represented by a PV diagram or a TV diagram. Moving on, you'll have to uh, understand the, the, the process of determining uh, data of pure substances from the tables of property data. So if you have to explain properties thermodynamic properties include uh, um, pressure temperature specific volume internal energy and there are few others so you you would learn how to extract the relevant data out of the table depending upon and and then you'll also learn how to use the uh, you, how, how to decide for yourself that which table you have you have to use to extract the data then you will move on towards the hypothetical substance, which is ideal gas and the ideal gas equation of state. Once you have uh, the ideal gas equation of state, you will apply that equation to determine some of the typical problems for uh, for for uh, for uh, equipments or systems that involve uh, mechanical thermodynamics. And once you have learned the process of applying ideal gas equation to, to to solve your problems you will uh, then be introduced to compressibility factor which basically uh, determines the deviation of uh, real gases from the ideal gas behavior so this is what would be included in this chapter uh, if we begin with the today's session what do you understand by a pure substance from the screen purity now all right the most common uh, understanding uh, is 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 an understanding where you say that uh, a pure substance is is uh, a substance which has which 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 is uh, free from impurities. But in in terms of thermodynamics, that's not the correct definition. The correct definition is a pure substance has a fixed chemical composition throughout. It is not necessary that your composition is fixed to an element or a group of element. Your, you define a pure substance based on the composition and you say that a fixed, uh, a pure a substance is a pure if the chemical composition remains the same throughout the uh, 
uh, this also brings me to the point where it says that a pure substance does not does not have to be a single chemical element or a compound it is not necessary for that a mixture of various chemical element or compounds also qualifies for a pure substance as long as the mixture is is this point clear yes sir yes sir all right excuse, excuse me sir जी 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 स्टीम सर ये केमिकल कंपोजिशन तो ये वर्ड तो फिर आप सिर्फ एक ही एलिमेंट के लिए यूज कर सकते हैं केमिकल कंपोजिशन और राइट लेट मी टेल यू वाटर की केमिकल कंपोजिशन क्या है 2:1 नहीं 2:1 में एक एलिमेंट है दो है दो है लेकिन कंपाउंड तो एक है ना सर तो a pure substance does not have to be a single chemical element or compound water mein more than one element aa gaye yes sir all right compound ko bhi dekh lete hain uh what do you think about air is air a pure substance no sir aapke paas air jo aapke room mein hai उसमें नाइट्रोजन कितने परसेंट है 78 ऑक्सीजन कितने यही एयर की कंपोजिशन है रफली जी आर यू स्टिल देयर यस सर यही है यही है अच्छा और अगर आपके क्लासरूम में जो एयर होगी उसकी कंपोजिशन क्या होगी रफली यही होगी इज इट अ मिक्सचर ऑफ कंपाउंड्स एयर यस सर The chemical composition is same irrespective of where you are taking the sample from. Yes, sir. So, is it a pure substance or not? Yes, sir. Maybe. Got the point? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. As it says, air, which is a mixture of several gases, is considered to be a pure substance. Why? Because the mixture is homogeneous. Homogeneous means whether you take the sample from this room. over here or some other room from over here or from wherever you want to take the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen would be the same or the composition of the components in the uh, air would remain the same what about a mixture of oil and water is it a pure substance no sir it is not homogeneous i think is it clear to everybody why the mixture of oil and water is not a uh, uh, a pure substance so when you have a mixture of oil and water water would settle down at the bottom due to its density oil would come on to the top so if i take a sample from this region it would be rich in oil if i take a sample from this region it would be rich in water so essentially the two samples would not be having the same composition so this mixture is basically is not a homogeneous mixture therefore we cannot uh, uh, reflect to this uh, system or this mixture to be a pure mixture clear enough yes sir excuse me sir do we have any uh, standard or references uh, in order Sorry. to decide a substance to be pure or not what do you mean by uh, uh, references standards sir i mean tables if we are to decide whether the air is uh, pure or not so do we have to compare with the, the data the definition is where where is where does the table comes from i mean i don't understand the the need of a table excuse me sir agar nitrogen ki wo oh, jo average hai that is 78 hai agar kisi area mein pollution ja raha hai so 78 se above ja rahi hai to usko hum so so usko pure kar de nahi why do you call it pollution what is meant by polluted what is meant by polluted polluted mm. kya hoti hai cheez impure substances got the point moving on it says that mixture of two or more phases now we have two or more phases of a pure substance is is still a pure substance as long as the chemical composition of all the phases is same uh the primary phase let's say you have ice and water 
mixture of ice and liquid water is it a pure substance yes sir all right why because ice is in solid phase water is in liquid water is obviously in liquid phase but the composition is the same h2o so the mixture of ice and water would still be a pure mixture or pure substance what about a mixture of liquid air and gaseous air consider that you have a room in which you have air and you start liquidifying air so let's say i am at minus 50 degrees centigrade or minus 100 degrees centigrade for that matter i have a mixture of liquid air and gaseous air would i refer to that mixture as a pure mixture or an impure mixture pure mixture who said pure mixture sir abdullah sir is case mein ki agar jo liquefying temperature hai wo sari gases ka achieve kiya ho ji that's the condition normally mm, the the components would liquidify at different temperatures so unless and until you have all the components being liquidified you will not have a homogeneous mixture or homogeneous composition uh, again even if you have liquefied abdullah liquid yes. nitrogen may not have the same density as liquid oxygen all right so they may yes. not mix together in the same homogeneous manner as they are in the gaseous phase all right yes sir so liquid air and gaseous air in um, in a mixture would not be a pure substance why because in the liquid air the composition would not be the same number one due to the reason the reason that the components would be condensing at different temperatures at a specified pressure and number 2 the densities might differ so that so that they may not be in the in the same uh, ratio throughout the system clear enough phases of a pure substance again substance exist in different phases you already know that at room temperature pressure copper is solid mercury is liquid and nitrogen is in the gaseous phase However, in a different condition, each may appear in different phase. You already know that copper at about 1300, 1400 degrees and centigrade would be in the liquid form. Similarly, nitrogen at minus 196 would be in the uh, liquid form. So it depends upon the temperature and pressure you are referring to, state of a or the or the phase of a, a particular substance. Uh, already know that there are three principal phases three principal phases in liquor within the principal phase there are several phases that may exist and each different phase would have a different molecular structure for example carbon which is solid the principal phase is solid may exist in graphite in the form of graphite which has an hexagonal crystal structure and diamond which has a tetra tetrahedral crystal structure by the knowledge of material science you already know that iron which is or uh, uh, iron or steel which is in solid form it can exist in fcc crystal structure or bc structure it can exist as ferrite and austenite so depending upon the structure or the atomic arrangement atomic or molecular arrangement depending upon what you're talking about you may have different structures and those structures would ultimately correspond to different phases a phase is identified as having a distinct molecular or atomic arrangement that is homogeneous throughout the material and is separated from other phases by an easily identifiable boundary or surfaces for example the two phases of h2o in iced water ice would have its own molecular structure water in the liquid state would have its own molecular arrangement and there would be diff i mean the, the distinction between the two would be the boundary of the interface between the solid and the liquid phase is is this point clear yes sir all right moving on you are not concerned about 
what is exactly the molecular structure and how does the phases behave different phases behave understanding of the molecular phenomena which is common in each phase that is important and you already know that we'll just quickly go through that it says that intermolecular bonds are strongest in the solids and they are weakest in the gaseous phase uh, if you if you start with the solids you know that the molecules and solids are arranged in a 3d pattern uh, that is repeated throughout the lattice that's a unit cell which is being repeated throughout the cell and there are small distances between molecules and solid and the attractive forces of molecules uh, are are large and they they act on each other now uh, considering the the attractive forces of molecules are large uh, you may have a question why don't they uh, fall upon each other uh, and then start piling upon top of each other that is be due to the repulsive forces that becomes dominant as the molecules start to approach each other so as they as there are two molecules over here or two atoms over here as they try to get much closer their electron clouds start repelling each other so that there is a specific distance at which these uh, atoms remain uh, or, or 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 they don't pile up on top of each other in case of solids solid molecules you already know they cannot move but they vibrate at equilibrium positions and the velocity of oscillations basically depend upon the temperature at which you are uh, having that substance as you increase the temperature the velocity of molecules would re reach to a point where the intermolecular forces would essentially overcome each other and groups of molecules start breaking away this is basically the melting process or the phase change process and the molecular spacing in liquid phase is not much different from that of solid phase but the molecules are no longer at fixed positions relative to each other they can rotate and they can translate freely you already know that by high school physics moving on the intermolecular forces are weaker in liquids as compared to solids but they're still stronger as compared to the gases and in the gas gaseous phase the molecules are far apart from each other and the molecular order is essentially non existing they continue to move randomly colliding with each other and the walls of the container in the gaseous phase in the phase of pure, pure substance the molecules in solid are kept at positions um, and then it's being like they are attached with the springs having intermolecular forces so these are the atoms of a solid and it is assumed that they are, they are vibrating at their positions uh, but but they they are not allowed to uh, uh, move freely from their positions however <clears throat> in in uh, liquids chunks of molecule break away from each other they are uh, moving freely around uh but in gaseous phase there is no specific pattern or order that is being followed by the uh, atoms or the molecules of the gaseous phase now uh, the phase change process of pure substance it is essential to understand the phase change process of pure substance there are many practical situations where two phases of a pure substance coexist in equilibrium so uh, from the perspective of thermodynamics of mechanical engineering the phases which are important to you is is the liquid vapor phase these are the two phases which are important to you for example water that exists at liquid vapor in water gets the heat and evaporates so there are uh, there is a phase change process from liquid to vapor that is being involved in the boiler similarly in the condenser of a steam power plant there is the opposite phase change pro process vapor is essentially converting into liquid so leak and vapor to liquid phase transformation it is very much common in many of the equipments uh, that involve thermodynamic principles and uh, another example is that of the refrigerant the refrigerant that circulates in the freezer 
water compartment. Basically, the refrigerant turns from liquid to vapor as it extracts heat from the components. Is this point clear to you? Most of the thermodynamic principles with regards to the interest of mechanical engineering, uh, they have essentially uh, liquid to vapor phase transformation process or vapor to liquid phase transformation process, which is common to them. So it is essential that from the point of view of this course, you should have an understanding of the liquid and vapor phases and their mixture. And you should have an understanding of how the phase transformation process essentially uh, initiate in the in the system. A familiar substance, which is water, is used to uh, uh, demonstrate the basic principles involved uh, during the phase change process for water. And once you have learned the basics of that process or the physics of that process, what is happening in the phase change process in water, that basic principle would be uh, applicable to all the pure substances. All pure substances would essentially exhibit the same generic behavior. So far, is it clear? Yes, sir. All right, moving on. So uh, let's say I have a piston cylinder device which contains liquid water at 20 degrees centigrade and one atmospheric pressure. At this condition, my water should be in which phase? Liquid phase. Sir. All right. So it says that under these conditions, your water is in the liquid phase. This liquid is also known as compressed liquid or subcooled liquid. And what is the definition of uh, a compressed liquid or subcooled liquid? It's a liquid which is not about to vaporize. The essential thing is it is not about to vaporize. What is meant by not about to vaporize? If I add small amount of heat to this liquid, what would happen? The temperature increase will increase. G. But would it vaporize? Let's say I add no, certain no. all right. Let's say I add certain amount of heat to the system. Uh, as a result of this heat addition, what would happen to this piston? Move upwards. So in case of water? No, no. If I add yes, some heat into the system, if I'm adding heat into the system, the the outside pressure is one atmosphere. And then there is this weight acting on top of this water. If there is no additional force that is being acting, if there is no additional force acting on this system, increasing the heat to the system would, would result in what? Yes. Increasing pressure. Uh, increasing pressure if the volume is kept constant or if the volume is not kept constant, and pressure is kept constant, so it will uh, do some work. It will do some work and it would at acquire some new uh, position. Yes, sir. That means the specific volume would increase. All right. Yes, sir. So with increase yes, in temperature, if you increase the temperature, the specific volume would increase, let's say to 40 degrees centigrade. Clear? Yes, sir. But has the water vaporized as yet? No, sir. No, sir. No, no, sir. sir. All right. So the liquid would be termed as compressed liquid. All right. Compressed liquid, normally compressed liquid, or you could also refer to it as subcooled liquid. So a liquid which is not about to vaporize. That means if you add small amount of heat to it, it will not vaporize. That we liquid is basically termed as compressed liquid. Clear enough? Yes. Is sir. this point clear? All right. Moving on, let's say there's the same thing that if now heat is being transferred to, let's say, uh, such that the temperature goes to 40 degrees centigrade, liquid water would expand and its specific volume would increase. To accommodate this expansion, the piston moves slightly upwards. The pressure in the cylinder remains constant at one atmospheric pressure because the barometric pressure, which is outside pressure, and the weight of the piston is the same. 
and water is still a compressed liquid at the state since it has not started to vaporize so we'll still refer to this water as compressed liquid but let's say i increase the temperature to 100 degrees centigrade i am adding more heat to the system so that the temperature kept rising until it reaches to 100 degrees centigrade and at this point the pressure is obviously the same because you have not added any extra pressure on the piston at this point water is still a liquid but any further addition of heat would result in what vapors boiling of the water if, yes it would result in the formation of vapors or vaporization that yes, is a phase change process from liquid to vapor is about to take place a liquid that is about to vaporize is called saturated liquid is this point clear yes sir yes. all right so this is a liquid uh, state this one was state 1 this is state 1 1 atmospheric 20 degree centigrade you have liquid water this is again state 2 where you have liquid water but it is at 1 atmospheric at 100 degree centigrade and the specific volume has increased as compared to the state 1 this liquid is known as saturated liquid now i'll not be able to complete it because this is whole process uh, so i'll stop over here and i'll begin from the same point so that we have a continuation for the next class all right so i'll stop over here